All right, took a little while. Sorry about that technical difficulties. Thanks, Anna, Star Wars girl, for trying to help me. That was a little bit of a cluster F. Um, I just got a tablet um, today. What? So you can sit on a bed. Hmm? Plug it in for different batteries. Plug what in? Uh, mine's plugged in over here. Okay, so I'm going to make sure um, I can see everything that's going on. Appreciate you guys hanging out. This is like kind of bumpy, bumpy, bumpy right now. Until I figure the figure this shit out. The the <clears throat> camera I'm using and all this other uh, the tablet I'm using only faces a certain way because the holder I have. And bloop bloop bloop. Um, where do you guys want to see it? Now, nah, fuck it. I'm not going to fuck with it anymore. This shit's giving me a headache. All right, so we started out talking about all this, uh, this stuff, the Secura stuff. And uh, I did another one on Instagram, and then I went to L.A., and then I looked at the sketches, and I just decided that, you know, uh, fuck it, that the sketches that I did the first time were... They were okay. They they weren't great, and so I trashed uh, all that stuff. So normally, when I do sketches for um, a client, it looks something like this. So this it's kind of hard to see. This is Jimmy Borger. So you can see the sketch part, obviously. It's here. This is what I showed them originally, kind of the rough sketch. And then you see, uh, of course, the uh, the final version, and then we made some changes to that. And so that's usually how um, I work with these uh, people. And uh, there's one person watching, and believe me, I, I do appreciate it. It's probably uh, my girlfriend. Um, so that's that. And so then when I went to LA and I had some more time to think about what was going on and I met with the one punch Mickey, who was a guy who's going to end up actually being the community model. Um, I started to develop these uh, other ideas and uh, luckily I had some Japanese friends and I could talk to them about um, make sure that the kanji is correct for Kaneda on the back of this one. And then I started thinking about if this costume would be more, uh, maybe it was better if it's a like double layered uh, costume with a heavy, heavier armor on top and then more like samurai um, kind of style uh, underneath maybe. Um, so that's where I'm at now. So for the one, ones, ones of you that's watching, which is, uh, it's probably me. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm watching uh, myself. Um, I might just uh, wait a second and consume more coffee. And wait for some uh, people to get in here. It, it would be um, awesome if, if it was more than a, you know, uh, one person. Um, and then this way I can try to mess with this camera uh, and change it to, uh, yeah, I'm not going to do that. Fuck it. So let's wait. Let's wait a second. And then.
All right, so we're talking about for the for the two of yous, which is probably me and myself watching. Uh, my name is Todd. I've been uh, working on films and making clothes for bands since about 2001. I lived in LA for a while after I left uh, Houston, and um, uh, now I pretty much uh, do this full time. But I'm now uh, back in Texas, and so I just finished working in uh, on Alita, and I was acting uh, in Alita, and. Um, you guys write and let me know if you see this glitchy glitchers and crap that I'm seeing. It looks like some uh, some little black chunks on the bottom of the screen. Uh, let me know if you guys are seeing that um, as well. Um, once again, this is a I'm trying to use this tablet, and it's been a you know I'm trying to kind of figure it out so. Um, hopefully this is not like super, super annoying for you guys um, with kind of this glitching. Let me move, try to move the camera again, if you don't mind. Um, bear with me. I want to thank uh, Anna, uh, Star Wars girl again. She was just trying to help me figure out this stuff um, with the uh, with the tablet. And uh, it's uh, hilarious. So that looks pretty good. And are you guys seeing those glitches on the bottom of the screen? That's pretty annoying. I don't know what, what's going on. Um, it might be the signal in here. So um, I apologize, and let's just try to, to get get through this. Um, so Zach sees it. I don't I don't know what it is. I um you guys just want me to do this anyway. It's just gonna be weird. Like a, it's gonna be like a low low budget uh uh art time, I guess, until uh, I discover uh, how to do this a little bit better. Um, so what we're talking about is. Uh, the live stream that I did on uh, Instagram developed a bunch of ideas, basically went to LA, scrapped all those ideas, came back and decided maybe it's going to be better if we try to make a combination for Kanita since he's on this power bike um, that I assume is probably going to go over 200 miles an hour. So it's kind of hard to tell in the uh, in the anime exactly how fast it goes, but let's just say it goes 250 or so. So what I started doing was drawing uh, a heavier armor that could possibly go over almost like this traditional samurai, almost like a woven leather kind of under under piece. So this would have a uh, you know, the famous uh, pill on the back. And then this is Kanita in, uh, in Kanji. Yeah. So that's kind of where we're at. So I've kind of done the backs of these. So what I'm going to try to do is do a front with the, the bigger armor jacket open, exposing the lower, uh, like, samurai more samurai style uh, jacket. I don't know how to zoom or anything, so just forgive me for while I learn over the next uh, like week or so. Um, so when I started learning how to draw, all of us, uh, well, I grew up in the 70s, so all of us were watching uh, Star Wars and listening to Kiss, and um, I was really fascinated by the art of Star Wars book because it had all the sketches that the uh, you know the guys did for the creatures, and you could see all the um, you know all the Ralph McQuarrie art and everything was in there, and that's where I got introduced to a couple of my favorite guys, and uh, I kind of followed them uh, from there. One of them is uh, well uh, Ron Cobb, and he did some drawings of some of the the aliens from the Cantina. 
Um, he did a really cool, I think he did the hammerhead drawing. He did a really cool, like uh, a guy that looked like a big kind of like a jellyfish, like Day of the Triffids kind of guy. Um, and so that stuff was really fascinating uh, for me when I was growing up to look at those. Like um, you can tell I'm not the really the best, uh, uh, the best uh, anatomically correct and uh, most awesome artist, but I know enough to to do I guess my job, which is to kind of convey the ideas uh, as for uh, you know the clothing and and roughly the scale, uh, the scale strangely pretty much changes um, a lot when you get an actor into the clothing because they're going to have special needs. Um, the costume is going to have special needs, things that you didn't think about maybe necessarily when you're drawing it out and when you're putting it all together. Um, stuff always comes up. It's n There's no need to uh, panic or anything. Um, you just kind of, uh, you know, keep it going. So um, I got introduced to Ron Cobb and all these guys that are, are production production artists. And first from Ron Cobb, then, you know, there's Sid Mead, there's Mike Plug. These are all artists. I think that if you kind of enjoy this uh, kind of production art, from you know movies that you know well Star Wars and then Plugin and I think uh, on Cobb maybe did stuff for the Thing as well John Carpenter's the Thing uh, Ron Cobb is responsible for making all the pic pictographs and uh, a lot of the stuff that you see in the first Alien I mean it's actually really a lot of it's hard to see but it's all the stuff that's you know the zero gravity warning lines and the coffee. Uh, pictograms and all that other stuff is on Ron Cobb stuff and it's like uh, if you go on I think uh, Pinterest and you just look up like alien art Ron Cobb or alien uh, I think they're, they're called pictograms or pictographs a lot of that stuff is gonna is gonna come up so if you picture you know this outer outer suit I always like kind of draw the little dude first as best as I can um, and when, when we, when, uh, me and all my friends were learning how to draw, we all got this book called how to draw the Marvel, uh, way. And so we all got that book and we all, you know, tried to learn about, uh, anatomy as best, um, as we can, um, uh, as you can tell, um, you know, I've gone, I've gone a little Egon, uh, Shelley or Shiel or, uh, Clemped a little, uh, I end up making people with elongated uh, bodies that kind of don't make sense, but I, I don't know, like it, you know, reminds me a little bit of like Speed Racer and stuff. So what we're doing is thinking about the front of this jacket. And the goal is with, with this exercise, this is not, you know, this is not for a movie. Um, this is for me to do something that we can all kind of be a part of on YouTube and, and um, I can build my audience and we can, uh, you know, go through the process and uh, take it all the way to building um, the costume and doing a, a photo shoot will be the, the last part of it. And on YouTube, there's a, I had a whole thing set up I was trying to do where it all the steps are listed and I'll have to relist it now that this whole thing got a got a little wackadoo. Um, but you know the the concept part is gonna be between basically me and uh, me and you guys. So um, usually when you're doing the concept art, the director is the, um, he's God. So whatever his, he says goes, you, you do whatever the director wants, uh, to, to the best of your ability and, uh, make sure that he's happy. So for this exercise, um, you guys, uh, I guess as a group, 
will um, act kind of as the director. And we can talk about ideas uh, together. And when this project is done, everyone will have hopefully have had some kind of uh, input, no matter you know how how small. There's a guy I was talking to on Instagram today. Was like, well, uh, his his idea was, well, definitely Canada's uh, suit has probably been been pretty effed up a couple times, or way more than a couple times, and. You know, he's probably done some repairs. Probably, probably. Um, you know, when we did a, uh, when we did Alita, uh, Battle Angel, and uh, it's pretty hard to see in the film, but um, Doctor Ito on his coat, we did five, five or six different coats, and Doctor Ito being uh, a, a doctor, uh, a surgeon, and probably like a, a really smart guy. All the, all the stuff we did on Ito's coat. Um, for instance, there was a repair that he did on his uh, shoulder after they had the alleyway fight. And so what we did for that, because he's a precise guy, is it ended up being, you know, like a patch with all these like rivets perfectly placed apart from each other. And then we came back and we did, uh, you know, stitching perfectly, you know equidistant from each other but between the rivets you know because uh that's what we figured he would do it would it'd be very surgical it'd be very nice it would be uh, precise it'd be very clean so um i think the idea for uh Kanita is this is probably not going to be very precise probably not going to be very uh clean maybe he's got some um other shoulder pads or um elbow pads that like he, he added that weren't part of the original jacket that are kind of like just just on there now so um we're gonna put some elbow pads that l look you know really different from each other so we'll have one side that's sticking out quite a bit and as you go over here this bicep is uh, elongated too long we're gonna say that on this side he had the existence of the the elbow pad that was probably in the in the jacket i think this arm will look cooler bent then we'll show you the kind of like the vents like on the on the hugo jacket that i did and and alita it's kind of hard to tell but it's got some kind of like vented looking uh, elbow, elbow nonsense going on. So if you were to, to see it, you know, bent like it is here. So this is this elbow pad or elbow patch. You would have that that stuff right there. You know, it's got a defining border, so that would be there. And then these vents would kind of flare out. And separate, you know, so when he bends his elbow, you know, it has to give him room. So we'll say this part of his arm is, is still good. Now, the thing that I think is kind of weird about the... Um, the anime is that his, uh, uh, mention me. Oh, hey, Danny. Yeah, Danny's the Mr. Um, Pat, patch it, patch it up, man. So actually we're talk, talking about that like quite a bit right now. Um, so we'll say that this is his normal arm. The thing that like bothers me about the, the anime jacket is that, um, his sleeves are, kind of like they look like they're kind of rolled up or they're just cut short i can't i've watched it a number of times and it's kind of hard to tell exactly but it looks like it's like this like that he's got this kind of short 
weird kind of 80s. He looks like he's wearing a mom's jacket, actually. It's, uh, he went into his mom's closet um, during 16 ca uh, Candles viewing or something and took, took the jacket out. And uh, that was that. So the part that I like about this other drawing here that I think we could transfer on to the, the outer jacket. And if you're, if you just kind of jumped in here, we're talking about how to make this kind of an outer armor jacket with heavy padding that he's going to wear over another lighter woven leather looking like kind of an undershirt thing and then the undershirt i think is where the pill logo would live and then that's his name in uh kanji and then possibly in kanji we'll have the uh good for health and uh, bad for education or whatever it says on the back here um so it's kind of turning into a um a double layered thing just because i really like this idea I don't know how I'm going to do it. I think it's just going to be woven, you know, like in and out, uh, thin strips of leather, maybe a, a fourth of an inch or so, maybe just a tiny bit bigger than that. And we can end up weaving, I think, most of this part. Um, maybe all maybe all of this can be woven. So if you picture this would then be like kind of a more flat, a flat piece of leather all this although you don't see it now let me just kind of put it in um, all this could be woven and then to kind of mimic that there's these other little stitch marks and then this could be kind of woven so I think that that feels a lot more like a textile so maybe this under under part is not leather maybe this is cloth maybe this is like his uh kind of like kimono underneath his armor a bit like a samurai so i don't know uh what you think here's da danny yeah danny <laughs> Yeah, you mean this this jacket looks like the Karate Kid? Because that would make sense. Like if you picture Kaneda puts on his little like uh, karate suit, and then on top of that he's got to put on his um, actual like motor motorcycle kind of heavy heavy jacket and pants. I mean, I think that could work. I think you know on this you you know take off the the we would say no way. Um, to these elbow pads and these these pads would be gone so no no pads here and then we're back to this weird like kind of length the length of the arm thing of the length of the sleeve I mean what to do about that I'm still I'm still not really sure I mean he does have cool gloves I mean to think of someone having some like big cool kind of armored kind of gloves on but I mean one of those weird clown clown motorcycle gang members chops you right there in this region you know and breaks your bones so I don't know so back to this so this is the big heavy I'm gonna call this the, this is like the big heavy jacket and we're gonna say like that this is open so he just did uh he just got done clowning, maybe, with those guys. And I do like the idea that this thing is, seems like it's pretty high-waisted. Gonna do something that's about like this.
So we're gonna have the big padding and everything. So what we're gonna try to do, to, I guess, tonight is get maybe this this thing done. This front this front view, and then I can work on. Uh, um, next week I'm gonna do another one, and it's gonna be from uh, L.A. Uh, Los Angeles, and my guest is going to be a guy named Mike Broom, and Mike Broom is a production artist, and he works a lot with uh, K&B effects, so he's working on uh, uh, Walking Dead type stuff, and a bunch of other stuff that they've done. Um, I think it's safe to say Walking Dead. If there's anything else that he can tell you guys about and, or show you, uh, some of his older uh, work um, he's gonna bring it but he and I try to make it a habit of when I go to LA we have like a day to hang out and kind of draw he's been helping me on a comic book that I've been working on a comic book and a script called uh, Zipper Neck Kids um, and it's important if you think about George Lucas when George Lucas after he finished American Graffiti um, he got Ralph McQuarrie to start doing all these wacky drawings that he went to show uh, 20th Century Fox of, you know, droids and uh, Darth Vader and all this other stuff um, to get people to give him not very much money in the long run to do Star Wars. So for me to have a script and for me to work with Mike and for me to um, be able to kind of draw and then for Mike, to be able to contribute um, some of his really nice, clean, clean, clean uh, production art for me to go pitch. And ideas, you know, it's just, you know, it's a great, great, great thing. And so um, it's uh, who you know in, in a really weird way. Cause like when I met Mike, he was sleeping on the couch at this uh, crazy effects shop they, you know, they made monsters and stuff. And um, he was just there banging out these crazy paintings and, and just, you know, uh, painting and drawing and painting and drawing. And he kept at it. And then all of a sudden, you know, I hadn't talked to him in a few years. And then it turns out he's just doing, seems like he's doing really great now. Um, so I don't know if you guys have an interest more in the the art part or the costume part or the whatever, but if I could give you any kind of encouragement or anything, um, you know, keep keep drawing. What's up? Commander Mark is still drawing, and uh, he's uh, a thousand years old in in Wookie years, which is probably not very old. He's he's uh, ten thousand years old in Wookie years. And he still goes to conventions. And uh, we used to watch Commander Mark a bunch when I was growing up too. And I was uh, pretty blown away. Um, and so I've always liked to watch people draw. Hopefully you guys just can like chill out and watch this happen. Or hopefully you're drawing along. Or if you have ideas, I don't know how you can show me. You can definitely um, contact me through the email address that's uh, attached to this YouTube uh, channel and show me um, some art that you're working on. I'd love to see it. And uh, let me know what what it's for, or if it's just for fun, or you know, tell me tell me a, tell me a story, an interesting story, if you can, if you'd like to. Um, so this would, would be the repair, the repair version side, I guess. So we're checking shoulder, it's the bicep. This is, should be the elbow. 
That should be the wrist. So we're kind of in pretty good territory. I have to kind of determine what this is. So the idea, I think, here is that this is that this is some stretchy, 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 like uh, heavy duty nylon or something to hold on this other uh, pad that he's using to uh, cover the damaged area. So on this side, what I'm trying to draw here is uh, these are some racing stripes with uh, some Franken stitching. He's kind of been putting his racing stripes back on and off uh, as needed. And this is a bunch of heavy stitching that's holding the sleeve together. And so maybe on this side, we'll have something we'll a little more uh, organic and messed up looking. So this is like, I'm picturing this is two crappy elbow pads kind of smashed together here. So down on here, he's got like just a buckle on this one. And let's say the strap goes up like this. So he's got a strap going to one crappy elbow pad. He's got like the heavy duty stretchy nylon kind of holding on this elbow pad. He's got his uh, kind of Franken stitch red leather arms here. Do a little some, some shadowing. And I'm kind of back to the same thing. I'm not really sure what what to do about these super short like 80s sleeves. I mean, I like it and then I hate it as well. But I like the idea of some strapping running through here. And uh, in one of those pictures, this shit's just kind of like hanging off of these straps. So we're going to say that this stuff is just flappity flappity into the wind leather. And here's some other We'll say like half of a side here is flappity flaps. And then over here, there's just like a nub, some nubs, like the nub of the other strap. And there's a bunch, little bit, bit of the strap still existing right here. And um, if we think about his under undershirt, we have to figure out where that's where that's going to go. That's going to live. So I still like the idea of the big, uh, you know, he's got a big, like crazy ass glove on. So I guess the undershirt or the kind of kimono fabric would be kind of like bunched up under here. Like this. Yeah. And then I think he had some like straps on his uh, on his uh, glove. I tried to look at the art um, briefly and then mostly try to forget about it if I can. That way, when uh, we do something, you know, we don't need, we don't need all those details. This is this is like uh, you know Akira Beyond or Akira Dark or I don't, I don't know what you would want to call it, but um, so on that way, you know, the main detail that we probably have still from this jacket is um, we can agree is this giant. Um, and, and it's not even, it's uh, on his other jacket, it's really more, this is the detail that I think that you see. And the rest is plain red. Um, but, you know, I think we can uh, do better, do better than that. I mean, just give it like an upgrade. 
so it doesn't look so uh, 80s. Maybe it looks, uh, I don't know. I don't know, what we're, I don't know what we're doing. I just want to give it a, diff a different uh, feel. I mean, I'm always going to go for something that feels more brutal and definitely, uh, you know, like uh, Canada against anyone in uh, Road Warrior. I mean, Canada would might destroy those people mostly because he's got more protective gear. Like you don't want to run around uh, in the desert with shoulder pads on. I mean, if you don't have to. Um, so I guess maybe we should do a versus a versus comic, you know, Canada versus uh, Mad Max and see what happens. All right. So we have to think about what what is this? This is looking crazy. So, and how would I even do this out of out of uh, leather? Because this this top jacket would definitely be out of leather. Um, and I'm not trying to draw like his uh, muscles. I'm trying to find a way that we could actually carry this kind of padding down here. So I think that in order for that to work, um, I would want to put kind of like a split here in the leather. So if you picture like these are some stitch lines here, you kind of have this big flappity shoulder pad that's going on. Uh, in here, I'm just going to kind of color it in uh, dark for right now. We would have to probably put some crazy, uh, stretchy kind of athletic um, material. Uh, you see it in, uh, for instance, like football pants and stuff. They're made of some pretty stretchy, hardcore stuff. I think we could put that in there. So we, when he moves his arm up, something's got to stretch a little because you don't want this whole thing pulling up. The whole jacket will pull up. Um, and the thing that I learned from working at Junker for so long is that if you have a coat like this, so this is your coat. And when you want this stuff to fit someone really tight, these armholes are going to be small. If you make the armholes small, that can keep all this stuff is all nice and tight. And this is what when we're talking about using not not stretch material. So this is leather. So this armhole is small, yeah. But what will happen when you have a small ass armhole like that? And if you're even if your jacket's uh, zipped up, when you lift your arms like this, the jacket does this from the bottom too. So if you lift your arm up, this the whole jacket lifts up because there's no there's no space here. So either a you can make this at a stretch material or you can start doing weird shit like putting like uh gussets and stuff so um you can kind of put this big v shape of material underneath here it would help so if you're uh if you're looking at the underside of the arm now can you guys even see this shit it's a little blown out so this is the inside of the arm. This is the armpit right here. Then this would be like the chest of the jacket. What you can do, um, and you can make it look like part of the design, the design if you want. I mean, when, when I do it, I usually make a piece that looks like this. So all this is leather, leather. This is all stretchy material right here. This is your pit. 
And so it helps some when you lift your arm, like this is going to stretch and it's not going to fight the rest of the jacket so much. But really for this to, to look heavy duty and, and uh, not so like we want it to look, I think. I think the best way to do that is in here. And we can probably uh, not worry about this so much. The reason being is if he's wearing big protective gear, he's not going to be like super, uh, you know, it's not like a Marvel superhero suit where he can do kicks and flips and all that. I picture this like, uh, you know, a lot more heavy duty and it's probably, it's a little restrictive and he probably would have to take this jacket off if he had to like really fight for any length of time. I mean, I, I imagine it would get uh, pretty heavy. Uh, of course, not like chain mail or something, but you know what I'm saying? This just has a specific purpose, which we would say is riding that speed bike. And so I can give him some, give him some fingers. And so get some knuckle, knuckle protection, I think. And still we're not really down to the pants. Uh, the pants detail that I like, at least from these other drawings, has to do with this uh, kind of like the side padding. So we should add that in. But we can make it a little more uh, pronounced. Like when I played peewee football when we were little, you know, you have to wear the, the, the hip. You had the hip, hip pad. So this is kind of like a version of the hip pad. And then what we're doing is we're gonna kind of bring it like this. Because if you land on your hip, like one of the golden girls, you know, you don't want it to snap or whatever. So that's where we're at kind of right now. Can you, let me see if I can show you the details a little bit better. So, so far, you can tell it has like a really crazy uh, big collar and all that because you don't want to snap your neck backwards and uh, break your head. But the idea was like when you see uh, this one, for instance, that, I mean, he wears a helmet. So the neck hole for this jacket is probably going to look like a little crazy because I picture that this part with its padding here and then extra padding here, you know, his helmet's going to like, has to fit in there, it has to be nestled into this giant collar piece. So I think it would look, uh, you know, it's going to look weird when he takes his uh, helmet off, but as far as it protecting him, I think he has to have all this padding. You want to keep his head straight. You don't want this stuff to snap back or to the side, you know, depending on what, what situation that he's in. So I think that we can make this even look a little bigger because you have to picture the helmet's going to be in there somewhat. And I like the idea too, like uh, depending on how crazy we want to get is that when this thing is, uh, you know, zipped up, for for instance, or buckled up or whatever, like in the, uh, you know, in the original art, I think he has like some buckles. Um, I think like you know having the quick release uh, plastic buckles would be you know pretty cool uh, up here, and we can give this thing I think some like style lines here, but um, you have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, 
BD621, BD621, yeah, with the accordion folds, that works, and you see, you see this stuff a lot, um, uh, I have some old uh, motorcycle stuff in my garage, where, you know, it's the, it's the little folds, they're like this big, of leather, and it's done on a piece of crazy ass elastic. So, I mean, that could be here. And uh, we could choose to either have, you know, these folds running, you know, horizontally with these pads, or we could like, you know, counter and have them run uh, vertical, but uh, horizontal is cool. And then, so if you mentioned that, with the accordion folds, I'm thinking of a, uh, a, a really, it's like a tighter looking, it almost, it almost looks like little round kind of little stitches. They basically are just stretching out the, uh, elastic and they just put a ton of lines in it. And then when you let the elastic go, then it makes all these cool ripples. So that's what I'm thinking about as opposed to, uh, I think accordion folds here um, because the elbow has to open up. And I think it would look cool because then you could have, for instance, the elbow pad here could be, this section could be black. And then the, the inside of all the folds could be red. So he folds his arm and you can see all the red details. But, um, Back to this other thing that now I'm thinking about, uh, the the stretchy elastic, I think would really look pretty cool here. And then I think we could do it here. So it ends up looking something like this. It's all elastic. Now you may notice that this elastic is running horizontal. So, um, it's not actually going to do much because, you know, the stretch is going to be more, more this way. So in that case, like this, this elastic probably, we could change the direction of this elastic. And sure, I mean, this elastic here is still going to stretch this way. A little bit, but it's mostly going to want to. It's mostly going to stretch this way. I mean, there's there is four way um, elastic, but uh, I don't really use it very much. So this would end up looking like a chicken wing or like a bat wing, and then we're going to say that our our detail lines go like this. And so this is like a chicken wing of uh, elastic. This is still red. This is still red. You know, all this is still red. And so then down here, we have some more textures. That's the same thing. It's the elastic with the, the, the thin uh, stitching on it. Um, and what I'll do is I'll try to bring that in from the garage uh, next time. I have a workshop here in, in Texas in the garage. So I'll, I have a bunch of weird stuff in there. And we'll, I'll try to bring that in so we can like look at it and see if that's going to that's gonna work. I mean, the thing that you're trying to do with, with bands and in films is, you know, make this stuff as comfortable and as lightweight as possible. And, uh, you know... You can sometimes, sometimes you, uh, you can't. Um, I was thinking about in Dune, I was reading about the, um, man, I forget his name too. Oh man. I think his name was Bob. Maybe someone can look it up. The costume designer from Dune. It's Bob something. And, uh, so there's the, the guys that then space time, the spice, uh, merchants or or uh whatever and they come with those bunch of those crazy mutant 
guys, you know, the one who has the big translating kind of disc and uh, uh, translates so they could talk to the, uh, 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 I don't remember the other people's name anyway. Um, but that costume designer used a bunch of uh, 1940s and 50s plastic or thick rubber uh, cadaver bags from the city of Los Angeles, I believe. Um, so those things were super heavy and super stinky. They all smelled really disgusting and weird. And so there's a story that I remember reading about that guy, but that's more like uh, some of my favorite kind of stuff is uh, repurposed. You know, he just saw this crazy thick, nasty rubber stuff and wanted to make it into costumes. And I think it was really cool. That's my favorite stuff, probably. I mean, the um, still suits or whatever are pretty cool, but uh, I don't know. Not as cool as, you know, walking around in a body bag, I guess. And so down here, we're going to have this thick kind of tuck and roll hip stuff. Oh yeah, Bob Ringwood. Yes. Who's Zach? Why are you so why are you so smart, Zach? Yeah, so that guy, I think he's I don't know if he's British or but yeah, so that guy. And you know, just the idea of repurposing, like that was always something I remember reading about. And so when I started doing uh, like a lot of costumes for bands and for films, like uh, you know, just like in Star Wars, the first Star Wars, there was no money. So, you know, it's all military stuff. And uh, most of it looks great. Uh, most of that stuff was... Um, so when you work on films, you can... Pardon me while I... Or get this coffee. So when you work on films, um, you make costumes... But also, for instance, if you're working for 20th Century Fox, uh, for example, they they have the huge, crazy warehouse, yeah, where there's just tons and tons and tons of costumes from all kinds of films that they keep because, you know, the production company keeps the stuff, you know, so when, when the movie's done, they take the stuff. So, you know, a movie, depending on what kind of movie it is, it, uh, is, you know, costumes made for the film, regular clothes that you can buy, and then costumes that come from the production company's, you know, costuming warehouse. That's why, for instance, if anyone is a Waterworld uh, fan, I don't know why you would be, but... Um, there's uh, those costumes like got around. So, uh, you know, one of the first videos I worked on was for a terrible movie called uh, Drumline. And um, they wanted to make some like post apocalyptic looking people. And so they could go and pull a bunch of the costumes from uh, Waterworld and stuff, which actually looked really cool. Really cool. But, you know, once you watch tons and tons of movies, you start seeing stuff popping up. like that it just happens but back uh back on track so we're talking about just the uh recycling aspect um so i got it i just got really got into that you know when you read about star wars then you learn oh yeah so that that costume is actually a british uh you know this this that or the other and that uh Stormtrooper rifle is a MG34 that they put some extra crap on, and uh, that Stormtrooper gun is a Sten gun that they messed up, and, you know, just the list goes on and on of all these repurposed things that they did, especially with the, well, I mean, of course, all the weapons um, and the costumes. So... 
I guess my personal philosophy uh, would be that, I mean, if you can find something that looks kind of like what you want, that's the best place to start because it already has like a real world uh, like feel. If like that's what you're going for. Then, I mean, that's to me like why Star Wars. Uh, that's why Star Wars works for me. That's probably why the, the later Star Wars films don't work for me like as much. I think I got really used to seeing this kind of uh, it's familiar, but not so familiar. You know, Darth Vader's, uh, you know, leather suit was a, just a motorcycle, some uh, motorcycle leathers. So the the very underneath parts, under underneath is you know respirator parts and all that other stuff. That's like a just a like a motocross leather suit underneath. So basically, Darth Vader is wearing a you know some riding leathers, and then they built the the costume on top of that you know as best they could. So I think the uh, the motorcycle part was pulled from you know twentieth century Fox, and then. Uh, of course, they made you know had to make the helmet and all the other stuff. But if you the, the base of his costume was just something that existed, you know, when you see that stuff when you're little, I guess you know you don't ever think about it. But I mean, it just looked cool, which is uh, I guess all you care about um, when you're eight years old or however old I was then. Um, but you know, they probably didn't have to do anything to it except for getting the motorcycle suit, put the rest of the crap on there, put on the helmet, put on your cape, and, you know, there you go. Um, probably saved them a lot of time and a lot of headache. But, you know, Dave Prowse was not, uh, you know, like a small guy, so I don't, I don't know if they had to make any adjustments to it or not. I'm not really sure. Um so he's got his little jacket is open, we're saying, or this big heavy duty jacket is open. Um, these are the buckles. That would mean there'd have to be something that buckles these things together. So, you know, I'm thinking we'll put some old clips hanging out here. So these are like quick clips. At least that's what I call them. The little plastic snapping uh, stuff. So we got these uh, pretend quick clips here. This side clips into this side. In the uh, in his uh, his costume, it's gold, which I think is ridiculous. I don't I don't like gold for the most part. I mean, unless you're talking about the Flash Gordon, uh, uh, the one with the Sam. The one that was mostly Italian with the hot Italian princesses and the the crazy uh, dwarves or little people playing uh, football with like some weird uh, metal egg or whatever that thing was. Um, then I think the red and gold worked in uh, that that universe with the, those weirdos. And so we got that. So then we have to think about. I mean, when you put a collar like this on something, there's got to be a seam. Or there doesn't have to be. Actually, we could try and do it the other way. Let's try and do it the other way, which is um, more challenging. But I think in this, uh, this might look cool because then we'll have some competing uh, style lines. Because we have um, horizontals, horizontals, horizontal, 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 little vertical. So there's ways to do this. I mean, you can make a bendy uh, neck piece if you just, you know, you just have to have enough pattern pieces, uh, which means way more style lines, which means way uh, a lot more work, but also it, it looks cool. So this thing, I'm not sure how to resolve this in my mind still, because it's almost like this, Part, if you think about the chest and the shoulders uh, up, feels like it kind of sits on top of the rest of this jacket. Yeah. 
so how do we resolve this? I don't I don't know. That's something to, to think about. But I would like it to uh I mean I think we can put stretch some leather over some uh motocross like uh armor pieces that I've used before. And then maybe um tuck it under. So this is like a free floating chest piece. Oh yeah, that girl, uh, Muti, is that her name? Um, Brett, I think, is talking about some of the uh, princesses. Um, so if you picture that this is free-floating, this is not attached, really. This is probably going to be attached somehow, like under here with like Velcro, probably. And then you would think, how do you keep these things all together? So you would probably keep it together with uh, I would say a zipper it's not a fly f it's kind of like a fly facing but basically our zipper would live here so picture this is the zipper Behind the behind the zipper, like when you just like when you look at the, your pants fly, you're gonna need a piece of fabric or leather that's behind this. You don't want to zip your uh, your nipples or your any your chest hair or anything up in your in your jacket. So in that way, when uh, we sew on this zipper, kind of like back facing piece. So it, it would be like a piece of fabric or, or a piece of leather like this thick. It's going to live back behind all this stuff. It's all going to be sewn down like right here. So you're going to have this stitch line that goes all the way straight down. And it's going to help these pieces stay married. Yeah? Because you don't want this chest piece flipping, flippity flopping in and around, you know, right here. So then we know that this is secure here. Underneath here, we can either use some snaps or heavy duty Velcro to keep this stuff down a little bit more. Or the other way you can do it is after you create this piece of armor, you just have like an extra piece of uh, leather here that's sewn to this guy. And then you can also top stitch it down right here and just turn it into part of the design the decoration so I think that's how we could get away with that stuff and so this is going to be a zipper over here and so then this is hopefully going to have some details we got to find these uh these things what kind of little chest pieces we want to use so when we press the leather or glue the leather down onto these armor pieces that it, you know, it's going to have some light contours and stuff to it. Um, which then makes this other part even uh, weirder, but we can still do it. Um, so in order to get this stuff to make a collar, you know, like come up into the collar shape without us putting a line right here, like a, a seam right here. You can do it like this. It basically looks like a banana. Like when you look at your pattern, it's kind of like banana-ish. And as you sew it together, the, the top, you know, kind of tapers farther apart. If you kind of picture it like this, so your, uh, my hand is like the, uh, like the bigger parts that are down on the chest and as you get to the uh neck area you got these crazy like banana parts and when you end up sewing these banana parts and doing all your draping and figuring you it just it's going to create the this it's going to create the collar it's uh it's easier than it 
than it looks when I have just my like weird hands trying to make you make you believe, turn you into a believer. Um, the reason I would do that as opposed to because you could do the same thing with just having the pattern piece. Um, it can still look like this. If you're talking about like the, the front panel, it could still look like this. For instance, I don't know you guys, can you guys see that all right? Let me try to make this darker. This is a really crude, uh, so this is the front, yeah? But we're doing this with leather. So when you try to, you know, you're basically dart, dart, you know, darting this stuff. When you do that, you're going to end up with like some little puckers and they're frustrating as hell. And they're going to end up like right there. Right on the chest. Um, you can beat them with a hammer. You can use a torch. You can try to exacto as much stuff out of there as you can, but it's always going to have this little pucker that's going to drive me crazy. So if you have pattern piece uh, that are unnecessarily divided, you know, all the way down like this, you cut it into a bunch of strips basically, and you're going to put it all together kind of like a banana peel. Um, you just make cool style lines everywhere, which is fun. And so since these pieces would be separated as well, it would be up to us to figure out, you can have the style lines here and you could choose to have maybe one continue down from here but you don't need to have all those style lines down in this other piece of uh, of the front you you, I, you could I don't know let's just uh, let's just move on you can figure that out later but um definitely a style line here is cool. This one continues all the way up the neck. The neck is going to peel, you know, peel like a banana. So if you're looking at this guy, and we're saying that this is the back, and that this is the collar, and that this is like this kind of piece of armor right here. And I picture this being like a... Um, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, God, what's the word? Is it concave? So if you see this from the back, this is his head. This is his armhole. This is his neck. This is his back. Yeah, rib cage. Tum tums. That when you look at this piece here, We have this, we're going to have the, the big collar that we talked about to try to fit that helmet kind of down in there. We can even make it, you know, it's going to be, probably should be bigger and more dramatic. So we're looking at something like that for the collar. And then if we're talking about this back piece, when I think about this back piece, it looks like this. Yeah. And I know it seems uh, ridiculous. But I thought it'd be cool if in his his bike and in our world, you know, we could put some little like you know, little sensors and some weird portholes and stuff back here. So when he kind of like lays down into his bike, 
which I think it's better if it's like kind of like an incumbent. I think it's called incumbent when he lay, lays back in that bike a little bit more. That all this stuff like kind of clicks into the the seat and kind of holds him in place. So he kind of like clicks in. You know, maybe there's like some little sensors and doodads and then uh, go find their way into his little uh, backpack here and help him help to monitor, you know, I guess his, uh, you know, his vitals or maybe gives him some uh, juice, like he needs some juice or something. And then, of course, you have to have some, you know, this is some back back armor this Kaneda thing I think you know it'd be cool if it like lit up but all this is like padded so it'd look kind of like this It's kind of like that. So if you guys are uh, not subscribed yet, <laughs> I mean, I hope you are, uh, please subscribe to this channel. Um, Go ahead and subscribe. Make sure that you're going to get notifications. I'm going to start trying to do this um, a lot. It's uh, good for me to, to, to just draw more and, and uh, keep in practice. And, you know, talk a bunch about a bunch of other stuff. Like uh, next week, we'll I'll be in L.A. at the other shop. We we'll, can do like a uh, tour of the shop there. And, uh, you know, we're going to have the special session with uh, Mike Broom on Thursday. It's going to be at, uh, I guess that would be uh, 7 to 8 California time next week. And um, and we'll just uh, work on this stuff a bit more. Um, I appreciate you guys coming in to check it out. I mean, think about this stuff. Maybe you can lend some suggestions. Um, it, I imagine this will take uh, another six or eight weeks, maybe, to finish this up. If all of us are uh, working on this hard. So six to eight weeks. Then there's going to be a photo shoot. And... Uh, you know, we'll just see how it turns out. So once again, Junker Designs, tell everyone to come subscribe to the channel. We're going to keep on doing uh, art streams. I want to thank uh, Anna Star Wars Girl because she interviewed me the other day and uh, got my uh, subscription rate uh, doubled, which was really great for me. Um, there is something going on uh, tomorrow that I, I think I'm going to be part of. It's uh, Odin Odin's movie blog. And I think it's going to be Odin and Star Wars Girl and I believe Jeremy from uh, Geeks and Gamers, I believe. And uh, I don't know what we're going to talk about. I think that we're going to talk a little bit more about um, Alita. That was a film that I got to work on for like a year and a half or so. And um, no telling what else is going to happen. But um, let me just read this real fast. So Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers, Gary from Nerd Rotic, Jesse from Mindless Entertainment, and possibly Ethan. And it's going to be hosted by Odin and uh, also Star Wars Girl, or that Star Wars Girl is going to be there. So if you guys can, just go ahead and... Uh, um, Keep your ears open for that one. That, that should be uh, really good. And as soon as I have some information, I'll um, spread it around. All right. Thanks.